thank you so much, Principal Sir and Devedi Sir, for uh, for being the vital support at every steps of our department. Today is the um, today the webinar that we have arranged. It is a response to this current pandemic, and uh, we want to respond in a process of learning and in a very collective manner, right? So the uh, so before uh, without further ado, uh, let's move on to the session. Let's move on to this. Uh, session but uh, to to run very smoothly I would request all the uh, participants to keep your speaker at mute and also uh, send in your questions in the inbox your questions will be addressed after the lecture and uh, if in case if the session runs out beyond 40 minutes then you can rejoin uh, using the same link and uh, yes and the meeting will still continue with the same link and the invite code right and <clears throat> Yes, so the, today's topic is managing emotions in lockdown. So now I request Dr. Garima to take over and uh, please, you may start whenever you're ready. Um, thank you, Sushomi. Um, and I'm very thankful to uh, Dr. Manoj Sinha for encouraging our department to host these webinars. And thank you, Devedi, sir, for uh, your encouraging words as always. So I would uh, like to start with the webinar now because we've talked so much about what you can expect so i think it's time to get started with it so today i'm going to be talking about how we can manage our own emotions and this is not uh, usual times that we are living in uh, these are very unprecedented unusual times of covid-19 and who would have imagined that uh, we would be talking about health and mental health uh, in the context of a lockdown but now that we are here uh, you know we have to make the most of it and we have to try and up our skills to match uh, whatever challenges are coming our way so the first thing i would want you to think about is what are emotions you know we use the word emotions all the time but what do emotions really mean so Basically, to put it in very simple terms, emotions are feeling states. It's how you are feeling at a particular given point of time. But the beauty of emotions is that they are universal. They cut across, uh, you know, language, cultures, gender. It doesn't matter who we are, but we are going to experience the same emotions like everyone else. So, um, there are seven basic emotions and I would name them for you. I know that you know them because you experience them, but still, you know, just for clarity. So there is joy, sadness, anger, guilt, surprise, jealousy, disgust. These are some of the basic emotions. However, there are also um, more secondary or complex emotions that I would be addressing in today's webinar. But Think about this. Um, do you feel like some emotions that you experience are good emotions or desirable emotions and you want to experience more of them, like feeling happy? And when you experience certain emotions like feeling sad or angry, do you feel like you shouldn't feel them? You shouldn't experience them? You want to get rid of them? Well, actually, a lot of us feel like that. We feel like some emotions are positive and some are negative. But from a psychological perspective, if I told you, every emotion is equally important to be experienced. Every emotion has a function to play.
I think uh, the speaker is uh, disconnected. Maybe a technical glitch. Uh, we will wait for two minutes. Uh, I think someone should call Garima about this. Uh, yeah, she's coming back. She's trying Mera to Mera video back. disabled hai. Whoever is controlling, Mera video disabled hai. Wo, agar chaho to aap kar do able. Okay. Right, sir. Yeah, okay. So, uh, okay, I'm back. I'm really sorry it got uh, disconnected. So, I was talking about um, emotions and how every, it's, important for us to experience every emotion and give space to every emotion. So I uh, would like to give reference to this wonderful movie, which we actually showed as a part of one of our mental health awareness weeks. It's called Inside Out. So Inside Out is an animated film. Maybe you can watch this during the lockdown with your families. It's supposed to be an animated film for children, but I think it has something to say for each one of us. So it talks about this nine-year-old girl, Riley, and uh, you know, her brain is like this control room of all the emotions. So how, if one emotion takes over and doesn't allow other emotions to be expressed, how it creates a havoc. So it's extremely important for us to also think about and give space to our so-called negative emotions, okay? And what are these negative emotions? So, uh, you know, during the lockdown, we are now in the fourth phase of the lockdown. And a lot of us are experiencing a wide range of feelings we don't want to feel. So we sometimes feel stressed. We may feel anxious. We may feel apprehensive fearful, sad, overwhelmed. So all of these are a set of feelings or emotions that may overwhelm us to a large extent. Now, before I come to managing these emotions, I want to first talk about what exactly is happening in the lockdown because of which we are feeling like this. So um, there are about four or five things that you know I could think about from a psychological perspective and, and I hope they resonate at some level so when the lockdown started uh, a lot of us were unsure we didn't know what was going to happen but there was some degree of initial euphoria some of us thought that wow we're going to get a break students thought that you know maybe they wouldn't have to attend classes for a while people would cut down on their commute they would uh, get more time with their families. So in the beginning, everyone was trying to be positive and they were trying to make the most of it. But as the lockdown started to increase, we realized that it is having a repercussion on our mental health. So if you look at the graph of mental health, there are a lot of variations. There might be days that you feel all right. There might be days that you may start feeling very overwhelmed and very stressed out, which is very normal because this, like, Principal Sir said this is becoming the new normal and it is taking us time to get used to uh, this kind of a new setup. So that's the first thing why we're experiencing this. Secondly, there is a lack of routine. So we are all used to a structure and we take that structure for granted because every day we used to get up, we used to go to work, we used to go to college, we had to go buy things for the house, we would go for a walk, but we used to take it for granted because it was happening every day and now suddenly we don't have that structure anymore. So things that we thought we had ready for us, opportunities which were there for us are no longer there. We can't leave the house, we can't go to work, we can't meet our colleagues, our friends. So that builds frustration, it creates some mood swings in us depending on who we are as people and what we are feeling on that particular day. Uh, the third thing is because there is a decreased level of predictability. You can't predict how your day is going to be. You can't predict if you're going to have your exams or when you're going to have your exams. Uh, people who are employed can't predict if they will get a salary cut 
there is a lot of predictability and not just for us also for less fortunate people their their degree of predictability is much more we at least have a roof over our heads we have the basic necessities which they don't so everybody is going through this predictability which is also leading to discomfort leading to negative emotions then there are there is a loss of pleasure and joy things that we used to enjoy doing right we could go out for a walk we could um go meet a friend for a for a cup of coffee we could sit in the staff room and talk to our colleagues and you know like let go of every little thing that we were experiencing in our family lives all of that is gone also creative spaces are no longer available to us so anybody who was into sports or athletics or dramatics or they wanted to go watch a film or listen to their favorite musician it's no longer available you only have virtual options you can only watch netflix you can only facetime but some of us are not okay with it we long for social connection and social connection somewhere cannot be substituted by virtual connection so that can also lead us to feeling cut off and uh, you know lonely right so no matter how much we tell each other that it's okay everyone is going through it it may not be the same for everyone you know there are people who are away from their families there are people who have uh, you know aged parents there are people who have health concerns everyone is dealing with it because of all of these factors which is affecting them much more and the last thing i want to talk about before i get into managing emotions is how does uncertainty affect us uncertainty is something that each one of us reacts to differently because we are wired differently we are all different individuals we have different personalities we have had different upbringing we have different role models all of these things will determine how we will react to it so in the same family one child may be more upbeat about it they may be more positive about it and the sibling who's been brought up in the same family may be more sad about it may be more negative about it why because there also biological reasons so there is a part of our brain which is known as amygdala which actually gets activated every time we come in contact with a threatening situation right so for example um Uh, you know when we were nomads or when we were hunters we would come across a tiger and suddenly uh, the amygdala would get activated and we had to choose whether we want to stay there and fight or we want to run away or escape from that situation with time we have learned that not every situation needs a flight or a fight response we could also cope with it in different ways but when something like covid-19 comes along which is unprecedented we don't have any past experience everyone is dealing with that uncertainty differently right so there is more often than not that your amygdala will get activated and will make you feel anxious and that is why it's important for us to have control over the logical part of our brain or the reasoning part of our brain so that we can pacify our anxiety so what i'm trying to say is that having an upheaval of emotions is not wrong it is absolutely not wrong you should not feel like you shouldn't feel this but you should know how to cope with it and how to deal with it right so i'm going to now come to why is it important to manage our emotions i'm not using control in our emotions i'm not saying get rid of our emotions i'm saying manage because emotions cannot be gotten rid of they cannot be put away they they will always come back because they are real so what we can do is manage them and why are we talking about managing emotions because that's all that you can do you can't control what's happening outside you can't control when the lockdown will be lifted when your domestic help can come when you can go meet your friends when will you have a normal life and you can go for a walk that's not in your hands so what is in your hands your own self and what you can do with your own thoughts and feelings so we need to shift our focus from the outside to to the inside right to to ourselves so i'm going to talk about some techniques some are internal techniques that regulate our internal sense of being or our 
sense of control and some some are going to be things you can do in your external environment okay so internal techniques the first thing i'm going to talk about that we do every day but we don't think about maybe is this breathe right we all breathe every day but how much of our, how many of us actually think about how we are breathing yeah, garima uh, yes i would like to make a uh, necessary interruption right can we with the management in the next uh, in the next session like because the session is getting over in one minute okay so so um, i'm talking about breathing and i'm talking about uh, breathing techniques to manage your anxiety so uh, you know whenever you feel a little bit anxious just stop and focus on your breathing just make sure that you uh, are noticing how you are breathing so when you breathe in your belly should be rising to breathe out it should contract right so this is a very simple way of relaxing yourself of course it comes with time and practice it's not something that you know is going to take away your anxiety immediately so it's important that you incorporate a uh, focused breathing as a part of your routine and i'll tell you another technique that you should use it's known as the stop technique which means whenever you feel anxious or stressed about something just stop doing whatever it is that you're doing and focus in the here and now focus on your breathing and look around and look at something which is tangible and real in front of you so for example i i stop and i focus on my breathing so i'm breathing in and i'm breathing out and then suppose i see this paper and it's real right it's front of in front of me and it's why you know i can see how the texture is and i can also focus on a sound maybe i can hear some birds or i can hear the fan i can hear a particular smell i can use you know my touch and check the texture of a thing you can hold a, a, a soft blanket you could hold something like that the idea behind this technique is to shift your focus from something that is making you anxious because if you're thinking about something most likely it is something that happened in the past right and you're thinking about it or something that may happen in the future you're anticipating it you are imagining the consequences you don't know whether it's going to happen when it's going to happen when your exams will happen when you will get your degree when you will get your certificate when will you meet your um boyfriend girlfriend friends all of that what is real right now is this moment right so you need to center yourself and focus on the here and now and focus on your breathing it's a mindfulness technique we do this with children all the time we ask them to stand near the window and just observe what is happening outside whenever they feel anxious so the point is not to push your thoughts away but rather distract yourself and focus on something else which will calm you so breathing techniques is a great idea there are some very interesting uh, and reliable guided imagery relaxation techniques that you can find online there is an app called calm or there is youtube where you can find something so of course you need to see the source how reliable it is but incorporate some kind of a breathing technique which i feel can help a lot even the world health organization talks about it externally i'm going to give a few points how you can manage your emotions by managing a few things around you right the first thing and the most important thing right now is to schedule a time to worry about things it could be covid 19 it could be the lockdown it could be your exams schedule a time so that you don't have the whole day your thoughts racing from one place to the other so you could be like okay two times in a day i'm going to watch the news twice in a day i'm going to talk to a friend about my worry about an exam or i'm going to message my teacher so that you can focus your energies on doing other things at other points in your day this also takes me to the point that please reduce watching the news you don't need updates all around the day all through the day you know the first thing in the morning you shouldn't be watching the news because what is it activating the amygdala the anxious part of the brain right so then on top of that if you want to feel relaxed it's very hard for your brain to do that brain is something it's like a sponge it's going to you know just 
every experience that you give it so if you give it stressful experiences it's going to absorb that if you give it more neutral positive experiences it's going to absorb that so have a time where you're going to talk about things that worry you at a certain scheduled time second physical exercise i put it way up because when you exercise you're not doing it for your physical health only you're doing it for your mental health there is enough scientific evidence that talks about why exercising makes you uh, stress free happy because it releases certain hormones it makes you feel like you've accomplished a task it just improves your mood all of that and who says between the age of 80 18 and 60 everybody can exercise mild to moderate levels unless and until you have a health condition you could even do things like make a jar take an empty jar write about one thing that you were grateful for every day and put it in a chit inside the jar and days when you're feeling low you could just pick out things that you you are thankful for or that make you happy it'll just remind you of positive things so this is known as the gratitude jar another thing is whenever you feel upset anxious you feel like you know uh, getting angry with someone in your family or someone is upsetting you remember to respond and not react and how do you do that how do you not react but respond by stepping away right so you can step step away from that situation you can think more logically about what you want to say and then say it i'm not saying you shouldn't express pushing your anger away doesn't resolve your anger but when you think about your anger you may find a better way of communicating the same thing to the other person and they may take it more seriously right so try and step away be more mindful and instead of reacting try and respond to a situation um the next thing which i think it's one of my most favorite things to talk about is the spheres of influence uh activity so if you see in this circle there are things which are in your control and then there are things which are not in your control so every time you feel anxious write down everything which is in your control it could be that you know you have a job you still enrolled in college you will get your degree you can use this time to build your skills you can get into an online course you can connect with your friends and family you can exercise you can take up your old you know hobbies all of those things staying healthy being hygienic all of that is in your control and whatever is not in your control when will the lockdown end ye time kab khatam hoga uh, ye all of those questions you don't have answers to so if you focus on this you're obviously going to feel anxious because it increases the un- uncertainty so focus on things that decrease the uncertainty and make you feel in control so that is one thing that you can do and also reframe your statements instead of saying things like uh you know things are all bad or this is the worst time ever i can't you know i can't deal with this anymore you can reframe it and say instead of instead of saying it's all over you could just say it's a difficult time but i can still manage it i'm still able to do it i have enough support so try and re replan refocus uh you know re look at a particular situation you can change try and change your perspective and uh, another specific technique to manage your anxiety is known as the a b c d e technique so every time you have a negative thought or you feel like your emotions are getting out of hand think about it take a moment so a stands for pay attention to the inner feeling pay attention don't feel guilty don't feel bad about feeling anxious stressed angry upset it's okay take a moment and label your feeling okay i am feeling anxious that's it you need to do that that's step number 1 number 2 b don't believe everything that you're feeling automatically we have so many thoughts we can't believe every thought that we're having so try and observe it you know anybody who's meditated would understand that it's all about observing your thoughts and not becoming your thought so observe it okay i'm feeling like a failure but as I, it may not be true at least give it your give it a benefit of doubt see try to find evidence broaden your focus instead of believing it try and say okay uh, if i if i don't get to meet my friends or if i didn't get a farewell 
expected but i could also get a virtual farewell i can also have a farewell later so you could try and come up with alternate ways of explaining the situation to yourself d is acknowledging that anxiety is dominating and everybody is going through it differently so what are the helpful thoughts what can you focus on so focus on things that help you right you could have a list or a bucket list of things that help you feel better for some people it's even things like gardening baking uh, you know doodling talking to your friend just try and do something at that moment right so these are some of the ways in which you can try and manage um your emotions during the lockdown i know it's a very broad topic there there are so so many things to cover but i think in the time frame i tried to cover a few ways so yeah if you have any questions now you can bring them up so show me we can't hear you okay i think uh, so so much not audible okay uh, so so much not audible uh, am i audible garima yes yes you are yes right okay so uh, a pers- uh, participant has asked a question that uh, as you said uh, to give some particular time for thinking about things and let your thoughts race that time how about uh, when we can we you know but how can we ensure that after that particular time we are not thinking about things yeah. we don't have control about or we don't yeah yeah that's that's a very good question a very valid question i think the first thing is that i think it's great that you gave this a thought you gave this option a thought because a lot of people at the outset feel like ye to ho hi nahi sakta so at least you're you know considering it now let me tell you it takes some time and practice for you to uh make your own self believe that you can have a control over your own emotions right because you're used to a particular way of thinking so if you are designating say three times a day when you're going to talk about your feelings you may feel like you're venting out enough and even after that if you have fleeting thoughts right so for example you worried about your exam and you discuss say at 12 o'clock with your friends then you watch the news at 3 o'clock then 6 o'clock again you discuss whatever issues you have during the day if you're having other thoughts or similar thoughts you could take a notebook and you could write them down just write your thoughts so that you have put it in a place so that the next time you have to address it you have it there you haven't pushed it away the point is not to push it away the point is to acknowledge it register it but come back to it later so try and do this right so uh, the second question is uh, from uh, miss priyanka set uh, she says uh, hello dr garima how can we maintain sanity or emotional control when it comes to work from home as it is actu- as it actually makes us irritable and agitated with no boundaries of professionalism and on personal domain uh yeah uh, priyanka I, i completely hear you because i i have been hearing how hard it is for people who are working from home uh okay so i will give you some quick tips one of the things that you can do is to stick to a routine right so when you wake up in the morning have a designated place to work don't work from your the room where you sleep or where you watch tv so even if you don't have a designated room make a ta- like you know a designated space where you're going to sit and work and get up whenever you want to take a break do not carry your work to your uh, room or your leisure to your workplace so even your food and everything shouldn't happen in the workspace the second thing is just having a routine for yourself will not help if you have other members in your family make sure that they also have their own routine so that everybody is productively engaged so suppose there are children in the house make sure that they have a routine to wake up do some activities do some home chores do some exercises so ensuring a routine is a great way the second thing you need to remember is that uh, just because you're at home doesn't mean that you're available to work all the time you can have 
a boundary or a limit to when you will stop working put your laptop away get out of that room and spend time with your family like you used to earlier that's important okay so uh, sarthak says uh, many a times during this lockdown i don't feel like talking to people much it's like my mind is just making me self isolate from isolated from everyone i find this strange and want to work for it but still can't do much about it yeah. okay so i think what sarthak is trying to say is that he is not feeling like connecting with other people right uh, yes, yeah he's feeling isolated okay sarthak uh, the first thing i want you to remember is that it is not important for you to connect to other people if you don't feel like it if you're not feeling like connecting to other people it's okay everyone is different otherwise also we are some of us are introverts and some of us don't like to connect too much with people but i would say there might be a few people that matter to you who you feel comfortable with if you are okay with talking to even one or two people in your day that's fine you know we this entire euphoria that people are creating that have these long sessions of you know like calls and connections you, know, you it's okay if you don't feel like it but if you're feeling very isolated then it's something of concern right if you're feeling like talking to one friend or your parents once in a while that's okay you may need that kind of space for yourself you're in a, in a particular age group you know developmentally also it's different for younger people but i would say have some kind of a contact right and have some kind of space for some kind of activity apart from just being in your room and doing your studies that's more important so it doesn't have to be connection like the people it could mean something different to you okay uh, many men uh, i think many questions are coming in uh, i think we won't have uh, that much of a time yeah. so let's take uh, three questions for now and uh, uh, moderator please save the uh, chat message so that we can respond to yeah, the yeah they can email or you can reply yeah. email yeah right yes, so uh, continuing on uh, three more questions to go uh, khushi says as we can see that many people are using this time to be as productive as possible but is it okay to give yourself a break during such difficult times and not feel the pressure of being productive yes khushi very good question because i think this lockdown has generated so much of pressure on people to be productive because everybody that you see around you and mind it you watching them on social media so you only see a part of their day where they are putting out something that they have accomplished they're not dealing with telling you their challenges they're not telling you what problems they are having so don't feel pressured to be overtly productive firstly define what is productivity for you on a particular day doing the bare minimum is also productivity on another day accomplishing a bigger goal might be productivity so don't feel pressured by what other people are doing because everyone's life stories are different you have to focus on your own self and try and focus on what will make you happy productivity isn't just about accomplishing something without finding meaning in it i would ask you to find something meaningful also even when you study if you don't find something meaningful you may not even pay attention to studying that but if you find a sense of meaning or connectedness to it you will do it more so try and find things that make you feel connected and you you try and find purpose and meaning in that okay just just doing x number of things in a day is not productivity it's also about quality of what you're doing so even if you're cleaning your cupboard and throwing out old junk is also being productive or days when you're just caring for yourself and not doing anything is also productivity and days when you're making notes is also productivity so don't feel pressured khushi All right. So, uh, second last question. Jeet says, "I feel like I have changed, and I'm changing a lot during this period. Sometimes I feel positive, and sometimes very negative. How do I know if the change is a positive growth or a negative degradation?" Okay. So, Jeet, again, I think uh, excellent self observation because I think it's very important for us to also observe what 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 we are going through. See, I. 
an unusual time like you haven't been in something like this before so you know there might be days when you're overcoming certain stresses and anxieties and you're trying to be positive and then on another day take gets you know the better of you it's okay i would say try and structure your routine as much as possible so that even if you don't have classes you can still have a time to study a still have some time to enrich your skills when you're a student it's not just about your studies you can use this time to plan ahead you can enroll in an online course you know do that then take out time for some home chores i'm sure you're helping at home also right and then take out time for exercise so try and keep yourself busy and let these thoughts come it's okay you're a human being you will have negatives and positives you'll have all kinds of thoughts write about them write them and then look at it at the end of the day and see what are the things you want to keep so build on them and what are the things you want to let go okay but don't don't let go without observing what you are going through so it may change you as a person and growth is not just positive or negative it's it's like you know it happens in all direction all right so we will take up the last question for the session uh we have a lot more question uh, coming in uh, we will uh, answer all those uh, through mail after this session and uh, so the next uh, the last question we're taking up is a participant asks is asking ma'am how uh, i somehow am unable to accept this situation i do miss my close friends and miss hanging out with them but somehow i am unable to bear this fact so what can i do yeah okay i so i don't see your name but i understand what you're saying and you shouldn't feel like i feel like somewhere you feel be able to accept the situation right and maybe that, that's what you're hearing from everyone that everyone's going through it and you know like how are you different but it's okay maybe your friends mean something really special to you maybe they mean something they do something to you uh to your personality to your identity to your individuality so i would say why don't you think of it in a way or just feel gratitude for these friendships and these friends and you know think about the positive memories that you built and this time doesn't mean that you will not have it again with them right you will again be back to the same you know situation even right now you might feel like it will won't happen but focus on uh cherishing those relationships focus on what those friendships taught you what it, what is it that you miss about them try to recreate it as much as possible right now you can talk to them you can write a letter how many of you i think this generation doesn't even write letters you know you could actually write letters and send them to you know them and tell them how you feel don't use whatsapp try and connect with them as much as possible but try and also focus on these friendships and what they mean to you right and you will come back to that time it's just a matter of time you just have to you know hang in there that's it okay yes uh thank you so much dr garima and also thank you all the participants for joining in uh there was a very insightful and a very practical oriented kind of a session and uh <clears throat> Yes, even uh, the speaker has also highlighted about how important it is to manage our emotions because nowadays it's not only the adults but who are emotionally wise they are the one who is going to survive and they're going to they are the ones who will make a uh, who will make their life more productive and at the same time increases their well-being, right? So thank you so much Dr. Karima, you have always been a part of our uh, you have always been a source of our support and inspiration and uh, and also the questions that has been sent in uh, there are a few more questions which are left uh, unaddressed so this questions will be addressed to you but it will be through via mail okay so i think ma'am will be sending out uh, your queries your yeah your the answer queries okay and uh, i would press, uh, i'd be happy to respond to you thank you okay so that's also very uh, you know good assurance that yes you will get back the answers again and uh, to close this session i would request dr devedi sir to give the word of thanks right so i think sir is in a <clears throat> yeah so i think uh, sir will take over uh, sir will take over for the word of thanks and uh, before before that i would uh, give a notice that the subsequent webinar will be on 21st and another on 29 so 
I hope you will continue to, you know, be a part of this learning process, learning through this new medium, right? And uh, you will continue to show your support. And yes, I do I request the register to please take over. Uh, thank you, Dr. Shishomi. And uh, uh, from me, it's by me. Everyone, in a way, we may not accept it, but one way or the other, we are facing. And solutions that you offered are really very remarkable. It's, it's something to do that we can do very easily. And when we are talking about the very, very nicely said that emotions are not to be suppressed, sidelined. And uh, this is what we talk about uh, in uh, rust theory. There are nine rustes are there, nine type of emotions. And you correctly said six dominant emotions are there. Other are not so much means prominent. And it is said in Bharat Nath Shastra, all emotions are to be enjoyed. And we were all together looking at that Inside Out movie. We had said about it, no emotions is to be suppressed or sidelined. They have to be used in a particular way. They have to be enjoyed in a particular way. All have to, So your uh, lecture was really very uh, enlightening to me. And the way you talked about ABCD, uh, really nice. I jotted down all the things. And... Uh, I listened to your lecture like a obedient student, ready to learn the <laughs> all the good things. So I really thankful to all the department teachers who are here. Uh, Dr. Ankit Prakash, Shushomi is there, Dr. Neera, Heli, and I don't know where uh, Ravi has disappeared, but he must be around. So <laughs> uh, we all are very thankful to all the members of the department. You have done something very grand. And you must be knowing we are connected uh, uh, means by the people who have connected to us in, uh, in different parts of country, not exactly from Delhi, where they were uh, making straight inquiry from me. So it's very beneficial to us and they can always correspond. They can always get the means queries uh, addressed by you and you are very nicely ready to oblige them. So thank you to all of you and especially to Dr. Manosina who really helped us in getting these things actualized. You members of the department are really great. And it was a great learning experience. Thankful to all the students who are listening over here. You can directly address your question to the person who was speaking over here and she can take care of those things. Thank you very much. We shall be meeting again tomorrow. Thank you so much for joining everyone. Thank you, sir. Uh, that is the end of this session. Uh we hope to meet you again tomorrow and have more fruitful conversation. So uh, yes. thank you again and good day to you all. So I'm ending the meeting, okay? Thank you. Thank you.